morning. Welcome to worship here at Central United Methodist Church in Mount Airy, North Carolina. My name is Danny Miller. I'm senior pastor here, and I'm so grateful for the worship team that we have. Uh, Kenneth Thomas, uh, who preached at our drive-in service this morning. Uh, Keisha Seif is over here monitoring everything on Facebook. Uh, Eric Cook is up uh, playing the organ and accompanying us for our music. Uh, he selected the music today, and of course we have Doug Porter with us, and uh, we have a, a special uh, guest with us uh, today, and uh, we hope that uh, everything will go well, and uh, Jay Dela Cruz is going to be trained on how to help us get online and do these live stream uh, services. So we're thankful for people who are stepping up to help us during this time, this difficult time as we seek to remain connected with you with the community and the world. So thank you for being with us this morning. We did have a quite chilly drive-in worship service this morning, and it was good to be with the folks there. Uh, we, we transitioned to a new uh, FM frequency, 96.7, 96.7 FM. So if you come next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. to drive-in worship, please tune your radio to 96.7 FM. Yesterday, we had our drive through uh, prayer service fall into abundance, and we've got those prayer requests that we received yesterday uh, up on the prayer net. You're welcome to drop by the church parking lot, uh, perhaps write those prayers in your prayer journal, or just stop and pray for over each one of those prayer concerns. But we want to re remember to be in prayer for one another and to care for one another during this time. Uh, one thing coming up next Sunday at 2 o'clock p.m., we will be packing the uh, survivor bags as part of our year-long focus, missional focus, on the o opioid crisis here in Surrey County and around the country. So uh, we'll have the fellowship hall set up, and we'll have an assembly line set up so that we can put all the different items into those survivor bags. And uh, so the first 25 volunteers will all pitch in and we'll get that going. But right now we're limited to only 25 volunteers and we'll have to check in and follow all those uh, COVID protocols. So that's two o'clock next Sunday afternoon. Uh, we'll pack those survivor bags. So thank you for all your contributions uh, for the items that will go into those survivor bags. And if you've been in the upper uh, foyer, you can see that many of those uh, plastic totes uh, that we have labeled with each of those items, uh, some of them are full. And so we're so grateful for your continued support. Um, I believe the only other thing to mention is uh, God in the pandemic is going to be our fall uh, Bible study. We'll have a, a group that will meet at 7.30 on Tuesday night and one that will meet at 10 a.m. on Wednesday morning. And all of that will be on Zoom. So if you want to register, uh, there's information about the book. If you order that, we will have some copies of the book here at the church office. But we need to get your email address and uh, let you know about the link. Also, uh, there is a way you can join Zoom with a telephone. And if you need to do that, you'll have to call into the church office so we can get you set up with that. Okay? All right. Well, thank you very much. Let's uh, begin worship with uh, a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for everyone who's gathered here today uh, through this technology. We thank you for the folks that came uh, for drive-in worship this morning. Lord, as we try to find ways to come together and to worship you, remind us all that we are always together through your Holy Spirit. And now, through your Holy Spirit, join us together once again uh, as we gather uh, here in this sanctuary and remotely around the world. Join us together in spirit and in truth so that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts to God. With what shall I come to before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Church, our opening hymn this morning, if you'll join with us, is found in your bulletin posted on Facebook. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. 
Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Today's Psalter reading is from Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord in his might and the wonders that he has done. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to his law. They forgot what he had done and the miracles that he had shown them. In the sight of their ancestors, he worked marvels in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zon. He divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the waters stand like a heap. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud and all night long with a fiery light. He split rocks open in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him, rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, can God spread a table in the wilderness? Even though he struck the rock so that water gushed out and torrents overflowed, can he also give bread or provide meat for his people? They did not believe in his wonders, so he made their days vanish like a breath and their years in terror. When he killed them, they sought for him. They repented and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God, their redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him. They were not true to his covenant. Yet he, being compassionate, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. And now today's epistle lesson comes from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 21 through 30. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Jesus Christ when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, 
striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is the evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us sing Jesus Loves the Little Children as found in your bulletin. And as we sing, would all of the children gather around for children's time. Good morning. Hope everyone had a great week this past week and are excited for this coming week. This week, we welcome a new fall season and have already begun um, to feel the cool, brisk temperatures. The fall is my favorite season. I don't know about yours, but it's my favorite season and I'm excited. Now, it was a little, it was a little chilly this morning, but I'm okay with that. So, I'm excited. So, this past week with our kids Zoom, um, we got together, had our Bible story, talked a little bit about it, and then I always try to play some type of little game. So this past week we played a game called Would You Rather? Now, if you've never played Would You Rather, here's the kind of gist of it. Um, you have two options to a question and you get to choose which one you would like, to, like better. Now, sometimes they're a little funny, sometimes they're a little gross, um, it just all depends on what the question is. So the one question, example, would you rather have a pet elephant or a pet dolphin? Hmm. Good one. Dolphin. <laughs> I'd like to have an elephant. But yeah, so what, but one of the questions I asked um, with the kids was, if, uh, if wait, sorry, I asked this past week was, would you rather have five brothers Someone got this question. It, would you rather have five brothers or five sisters? Now, the person that got this question answered it very well, if I do say so myself, because they made sure that their current siblings would not be upset. So in thinking of today's children's sermon, I ha it had me thinking about siblings. So if you were blessed enough to have an older, other, an older sibling, either a brother or sister, raise your hand. Now, some of you um, may have, maybe you were blessed with a younger sibling. If so, raise your hand. Now, now many of you may have, um, you may be like right in the middle, so you either have, you have both. You have a younger and an older sibling. Now, may, some of you may not have a brother or sister, yet you may have a family member or a friend that is super close to you and it makes making it feel like a, a sibling. Do you have that? Raise your hand. So having a sibling connection, be it through family connections or through friends, is a true blessing to have. But many times, having a sibling can be difficult. So I was blessed enough to have two older brothers, making me the youngest. 
the baby of the family. Now there is a 10 year age difference between me and my oldest brother and a seven years age difference between myself and my other brother. Now my oldest brother did not get to be present during most of my life. He had early permission to enter heaven at the young age of 17. And my other brother, he has a family that includes his wife, his son, and some stepchildren. Now, even though there's a big difference in ages between myself and my brothers, there were times growing up that I thought I should be able to do what they got to do. And there might be some times that my brother may tell you that I got to do some things that he didn't get to do. So many times with siblings, you might hear these words, it's not fair. There were times when I felt that it was not fair that they were able to do things I couldn't. And you may also feel this way in other situations with friends and family or someone gets to do something that you cannot do. Or when you hear of someone receiving something that you would like to have or you've been waiting for. Those of you that have raised your hand for having an older brother or, or older sister or younger brother or sister or sibling or a family member or a close connection um, to a friend, uh, I have a feeling you've probably said those words as well. Am I right? It's just not fair. There's a story that Jesus tells of when things just did not seem fair, or at least that was the complaint. Jesus' story is about a landowner who was hiring men to work in his vineyard. He hired some in the early morning, some in the middle of the day, and then he hired some just before quitting time. When it was time to pay the workers, he paid them all the same. That sounds kind of reasonable. Well, maybe, does it? Hmm. Well, the workers who had been hired early in the morning began to grumble. They would say, hey, this is not fair. You paid the workers who only worked for one hour the same as those of us who worked all day. The owner of the vineyard responded, I am not being, an, oh, I am not being unfair to you. I paid you what I agreed to pay you. Do I not have the right to do what I want to do with my own money? Are you jealous because I am generous? Hmm. Now, we have talked about Jesus' stories before. You know those parables? When Jesus tells a story, there's usually a meaning behind this story. So I wonder what the meaning is for this story. There are people who trust in Jesus and serve him every single day of their life. What is their reward? Their reward is eternal life in heaven. That's a pretty great reward. I, I would say so. There are also people who have lived most of their life in sin. And... They do not serve the Lord at all. Then, just before their life comes to an end, they put their trust in Jesus and accept him as their savior. Now, what is their reward? Hmm. Their reward is the same as the one who has served the Lord all their life. Eternal life in heaven. Now, does that seem fair? We might think, it, we may not, may not think that it's fair, but if God were not the God of love and forgiveness, none of us would be going into heaven. The reward of eternal life is available to everyone. That's very generous. And we are blessed enough to be able to accept it. I think that's being pretty fair. What do you think? Let us have a prayer. Dear most gracious and heavenly Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the season of change. Lord, as we enter into fall, let us just be reminded that um, everything that we are given, we need to be thankful for. Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless us throughout this week. Um, let us go into the world and share the good news of your love and your forgiveness to every single person we meet. Let us be the person that you have um, made us to be and direct us our, in our path so that we are able to do the things that we need to do for you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Thank you, Ms. Keisha. Central family, we continue to be grateful for the ways in which you have responded 
to continue being the church, both local church and capital C church, over the past several months. And we thank you for your continued gifts. And before we go to a time of reflection and beautiful music for our offertory, let us thank God for the abundance. As Pastor Danny mentioned, we had our Fall into Abundance event yesterday. Let us thank God for the abundance which we receive on a day-to-day -day basis. Let us pray. Knowing God, you have given us a never wanting future. But we often forget the nature of your divine gift we become entangled in the snares of self-centeredness. Today, we joyfully share these many offerings as a way to release ourselves from being self-focused to being God-focused. Lord, we pray this in the name of your loving Son. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you have taught us that without love, all our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. As we go to our morning prayer this morning, we ask that you continue to lift up those on our prayer list in the bulletin.
as Pastor Danny mentioned this morning in drive-in worship, if you keep a journal, um, a list, um, I know it was said that Mr. Rogers kept a notebook where he would write those that he wanted to lift up in prayer so he wouldn't forget. Um, we ask that you would keep them in your prayers this week. Um, we have Marilyn Ledford and also Pastor Greg Collins, who is struggling with COVID-19 in the hospital at this time. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, your blessings abound in our lives, and we lift our voices in gratitude for these lovely gifts from you. We also lift up our voices as our hearts cry out for our concerns for those who are ill, who mourn, who feel lost. We offer to you both our joys and concerns, so often intermingled in a bittersweet way in our lives. Lord, be with each of us, and for those whom we have named on this bulletin and in our hearts. Let us take just a moment to lift up those we want to lift up in a moment of silence. Lord, you have heard our cries and our shouts of joy. We ask that you would make your presence known to us again through the love and forgiveness of others as we have loved and forgiven them. And in the one who taught us to pray, we pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn this morning, if you'll join with us, is The Gift of Love.
you. Let's turn now to the gospel according to Matthew in chapter 20, beginning there with the first verse. Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, am I, do I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. How do you measure the value of your life? I think a lot of people have been taking stock of their life during this COVID-19 pandemic. Not just you and me, but people around the world. So how do you measure the value of your life? Now, some people would whip out a pencil and paper uh, to calculate their net worth. These folks would total up all of their assets, like their savings, their stocks, their bonds, property values, and equity over here in this plus column. Then they total up their liabilities, like their bills, remaining loan payments, credit card payments, taxes owed, and property liens over here in this minus column. And then they subtract the minus column from the plus column and Fingers crossed, their net worth doesn't have a minus sign in front of it. Some people value their education. Presumably, the better their education, the quality of schools they attended, the effort they made studying, the diplomas or certifications or licenses they earned, the more income they will generate over their lifetime. Other people may value their life based on the type of career or job they chose. Their sense of worth comes from job titles, responsibilities, reaching goals, having authority, earning respect in their field, and being promoted through the ranks. And with each promotion, they expect a raise in their salary. In every case, in every calculation, the bottom line is the bottom line. Hard work pays off. An honest day's dollar for an honest day's work. You earn your way through life, onward and upward. It's about getting ahead, and that is the American dream. This is the land of opportunity. But again, one of the things that we're understanding during this COVID-19 pandemic is that it can be so unfair, so aggravating when our life's worth is questioned. When Jesus explained the nature of God's kingdom, it didn't match the nature of things in this world. Jesus used a parable about workers in the vineyard to illustrate his teaching about God's kingdom. 
And what Jesus said didn't fit their work ethic. It didn't make any economic sense. This parable didn't seem fair to some of the people who heard Jesus tell it. You can see this scene that Jesus used unfold every morning. In every town, at gas stations, convenience stores, homeless shelters, temp agencies, anywhere day laborers gather in hopes to find work on crews going out to farms, construction sites, or landscaping jobs. In Jesus' parable, it is the owner of a vineyard who is out looking for laborers. The landowner tells the workers that they will be paid the usual daily wage. And later in the morning, the landowner goes back to hire some more workers. He tells a second group of workers that they will be paid whatever's right. At noon and at three o'clock, the landowner goes back to get even more laborers. Same deal, he'll pay them whatever's right. And then about an hour or two before quitting time, the landowner goes back one more time to get some more workers. At the end of the day, you heard it was time to pay the workers. The landowner told his business manager to call the workers in to receive their pay. The landowner gave specific instructions to pay the last workers who showed up at five o'clock who were hired, all going back to those who were hired first thing in the morning. The workers who had shown up early, got hired and worked all day long, stood and watched as the other workers got paid. As they saw the other workers who worked less hours than they did get paid a full day's pay, the workers who worked all day began to believe that they were going to receive some kind of bonus from the vineyard owner. But when the all-day workers got paid, they got paid a day's pay, only a day's pay. The landowner could see the look on their faces and they can hear the grumbling and the landowner made it a point to remind them that they had all agreed to work all day for exactly one day's wages. He didn't sort change them. And if they were uh, upset that the workers who didn't work all day got paid the same, it was his money and he could do with whatever he wanted with it. And then the landowner wondered out loud, or might it be that you are envious of my generosity? Might it be that you are envious of my generosity? And then Jesus wrapped up the parable by saying, so the last will be first, and the first will be last. Jesus had said similar things before in the gospel according to Matthew. He said things like, whoever, welcomes, uh, whoever becomes a humble child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? Even earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, a rich man asked Jesus what he needed to do in order to inherit eternal life. Jesus and the rich man had this back and forth discussion about how the rich man had managed to keep all of God's commandments. And then Jesus told the rich man, well, just do a couple more things for me. Sell all of your possessions, give all your money to the poor, and follow me. And the rich man couldn't do it because he had many possessions. As the rich man went away, Jesus turned to his disciples and said, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And that upset all of Jesus' disciples because to them, a person who was rich, a person who was wealthy and well-off, meant that that person was indeed a righteous person just like that rich man claimed to be himself. You know, the bottom line is the bottom line. Hard work does pay off. An honest day's dollar should get an honest day's, be given for an honest day's work. You earn your way through this life and that's how you get onward and upward. If the rich had a hard time getting into the kingdom of heaven, what about the disciples, what about the followers of Jesus? 
Peter pointed out to Jesus that they had left everything to follow Jesus. And Jesus said, well, everyone who's left houses or, or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. And he said, but many who are first will be what? Last. And the last will be first. Some of you may remember the book and or the movie Moneyball. Moneyball. It's the story of how the Oakland Athletics baseball team turned things around from being pretenders and losers to winners. You see, major league teams typically try to find the best hitters and the best fielders to put together that winning team. They send out scouts all over the world to find the best players and they pay them a lot of money. But the problem for the Oakland Athletics was they couldn't outspend teams. They couldn't uh, afford to pay players like the Yankees or the Dodgers or the Giants or the Red Sox. But then the general manager of the athletics happened to meet a young Yale economics graduate by the name of Peter Brand. Brand had a theory that the best way to measure a player's worth was to base it on his percentage of getting on base. How many times an actual, a player actually made it to first base when it was his turn to bat? As it turned out, most of those players with a high on base percentage weren't paid very much. They were not highly paid superstars. So Brand convinced Bean that the Oakland Athletics should build a championship team by finding the players with the best on base percentages. The problem for Bean became convincing the owners and the scouts in the athletics organization that Brand was right. Well, long story short, by finding those undervalued players, hear that word, undervalued players, with the highest on-base percentage, the Oakland A's became a title contender in one year. Unfortunately, the A's didn't win the whole thing. They didn't win the World Series, but the Boston Braves were, or excuse me, the Boston Red Sox were over there. They saw what the athletics were doing and they copied it. And a couple years later, guess who broke the curse of the Bambino and won the World Series? The Boston Red Sox. The last will be first, and the first will be last. Clearly, God's economics are not our economics. God doesn't measure how much our lives are worth according to how much money we have, or how much education we have, or how much of a reputation we have, or how big a job title we have, or even if we have a job in the first place. In God's economics, everyone's life is of equal value. And just like Jesus said in many ways, Many times, the kingdom of heaven, there in the kingdom of heaven, the last will be first and the first will be last. We've all tried to measure how much a person is worth. Each of us has thought many times about our own worth, but our calculations have been based on the wrong data. The only data that matters is one. Each of us, every man, woman, and child was created in the image of God. Two, God loves us all. And three, Jesus Christ died for us all. That's the only data that matters. I'll tell you again. One, each of us, every man, woman, and child was created in the image of God. Two, God loves all of us. And three, Jesus Christ, his son, died for all of us. The currency of the kingdom is the love and the grace and the forgiveness and the mercy of Almighty God poured out for us in the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. And folks, we can't earn it and we don't deserve it. The only thing we can do is accept it, give thanks for it, and share it. And it'll never run out. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's turn to our last hymn this Sunday, hymn, the hymn entitled, See How Great a Flame Aspires. Let's sing that together.
next time it's quiet in the space that you occupy and you begin to reflect upon your life and your self-worth, don't look at your bank account. Don't look at your bills. Uh, don't look at all the certificates or diplomas hanging on the wall. And don't look at the pay stub on the check that you get from the job or uh, for Social Security or wherever you get your bread money. Don't look at any of that. Remember three things. Remember one, you are created in the image of God Almighty. Two, God loves you. That same God loves you. And three, his son Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. You are worth more than anything in the universe. God Almighty. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.